Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and last week I published a video called Mac or Windows for Game Development, and uh, it kind of was a breakdown of if you're in the market for a laptop, should you be picking up a high-end Windows machine, or you should pick up one of the new sexy M1 MacBook Pros. And if you check the comments section of that video, there were quite a few, uh, let's just say, comments among a given theme. Now, my community here, we do a lot about Blender, we do a lot about the Godot game engine, and that community also has a lot of overlap with the Linux community. So a lot of people are like, well, what about Linux? Why didn't you talk about Linux? Well, I'm going to cover that in this video. We're going to also going to get into the topic of Linux on game development. So if you're wondering what the developer experience of working on Linux for game development is like, what the pros and cons are, we're going to try and cover that as unbiased as possible in this video. Now, first off, why didn't I cover it in that video? Well, first off, that wasn't the topic of the video. Sometimes it's this versus that, Unreal versus Unity, Godot versus GDevelop, whatever, that just happens to be the theme I picked up on. It doesn't mean that the thing I didn't cover isn't just as relevant, but you know, we can't make 900 hour long videos, so you gotta set parameters. On top of that, and quite frankly, this is probably the most important thing, it doesn't matter. If you're trying to decide what kind of a laptop to buy, well, if in the Linux world, you can buy whatever you want. There's a Linux install for just about every piece of hardware out there. And on the flip side, there isn't a lot of dedicated Linux hardware. And, and you know, I know they exist. There's people out there like System76, who also make the excellent Pop76 Linux distro. Uh, they're one of the big exceptions out there. But for the most part, Linux installs on just about everything, including M1 powered MacBooks. The ARM64 architecture is getting Linux support. So you don't really need to make that decision with Linux. You can also have and, you can have Windows and Linux on the same machine. You can easily just install Linux on a bloody USB drive and check it out that way. So it's not really a decision you have to make. If you buy a Mac and you want to install Linux on it, you can. You buy a Windows machine, you want to install Linux on it, you can. That's one of the great things about Linux, but also kind of one of the flaws. There's not a huge hardware ecosystem around Linux. Um, other than, of course, System76 and a few others. Like you can buy uh, Dell machines pre-configured with Linux or, or you can buy uh, OEM machines without Windows installed on them and then put Linux on them yourself. But the Linux uh, OEM market isn't really that much of it. Basically, if you are going to get a Linux machine, what you do is you go get uh, an Asus or a Razer or an XPS or whatever and you install Linux on it. So it wasn't as applicable to the topic at hand. Uh, you can install it on whatever you wish. So, and again, side by side. So that's why I didn't cover it in that video. So now we're going to go look at Linux itself. I'm going to break down some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses, and then some of the software that is and isn't on Linux. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list, either of pros and cons. It's just something, if you're wondering about using Linux, these are things you should want to know about. Now, definitely start with some of the strengths. One of the coolest things about Linux is it's very developer-centric. Out of the box, you get all of a developer tool chain. You get things like... Um, Clang, GCC, etc. You have a full build system on your machine and it always assumes that you can build stuff from code. So you get a very different approach to the way things work. And that means that things like frameworks just work great out of the box. Things like um, Python machine learning projects or if you want to build something from code, whatever, generally the process is so much smoother on Linux because that's just the way things work on Linux. Now, that's also a bit of a weakness as well because you're going to expect to build things from source, but it's set up that it's generally the easiest to get up and running with just about any open source project if it is on Linux is on Linux. It's normally a much bigger pain on Mac and on Windows than it is on Linux to get things built from source. Also, obviously, another big strength of Linux is it's free. And free, in this case, I don't have to get into that whole, you know, let's quibble about what free means. Or free is in beer, free is in freedom. Yeah, it's free. Both of them. So uh, if you want to be free from corporate overloads, if you want to be free from having to spend money, in both cases, that is true on Linux. It is a free and open source operating system. Um, it's also the primary development environment for many open source projects. So for example, the Godot developers, many of the Blender developers, the projects such as GIMP, Inkscape, and Krita, they are developed first and foremost on Linux. And generally that means that the Linux version is more or less one of the best or the premier versions there. Uh, so if you are in the open source world, a lot of open source projects work especially well on Linux because that's kind of, they're developed generally on Linux and ported to other platforms. Whereas 
if you're on the ported two platforms, there's normally a couple of flaws built in as a result. Uh, we also have a decent amount. Now, this is more of a weakness than a strength, to be honest, but you have a decent amount of commercial software that is available on Linux. We're going to look at some of the key examples in just a moment. Uh, but, it, you know, it is there and that is nice. On that topic, also in terms of game engines, Unreal Engine and Unity both have Linux versions available as well. Those are probably the two most popular game engines out there. So that's definitely nice to see. And you also have pretty solid emulation. You've got projects such as Wine, Proton, um, the Steam OS, Steam Play layer, and so on, that is making it so that you can run software from other platforms on Linux in a pretty good manner. There are, um, it's, it's very game focused a lot of times in the emulation, but it is quite nice. And then a final strength of uh, Linux is the community. The community is quite large and can be quite helpful. Now we get into some of the weaknesses of choosing Linux. And the first one is, it's quite simple. Lots of commercial software just isn't there. We're going to get back to some of those programs in a little bit, uh, but if you depend on certain applications, uh, either you're going to have to run them through a compatibility or an emulation layer, or you can't run them at all. Now, the nice thing is Linux can dual boot. So if you need to, generally, if you're running something like a Razor Blade or um, a Zephyrus or an XPS or something, it, you're perfectly capable of running both operating systems on just separate partitions on the same machine. If you need to use a certain application, just reboot into it and use it. But Linux itself, there's a lot of commercial software that simply isn't available on Linux. Now, another flaw of Linux, and this has been kind of one of the problems going back to the beginning of time, is driver support. And driver support, I, I've definitely always had problems with wireless network cards. Uh, another area, and this is really relevant to game development, is GPU driver support. Intel is notoriously bad drivers. I think they may have gotten better recently, but they've never been great. And then NVIDIA and AMD, they kind of take turns sucking at this kind of stuff. The driver experience is never quite as smooth as you would get in the Windows or Mac world. Just do be aware of that fact. It's just uh, a nature of working in the uh, Linux space. Now, this is one of those reasons why I actually really like Pop76. They actually have binary uh, GPU drivers that make life a lot easier for you, make it a lot more turn key like working in uh, either Windows or Mac environments. Um, also another area is in recent time Linux has gotten a lot easier to work with and out of the box you know you could give Linux to your grandmother and she's going to make things work quite a bit. You know it, it works a lot like Windows or Mac when you stay in GUI land but eventually you're going to run into that thing that you're going to have to you know rebuild the kernel from scratch and grandma ain't going to rebuild a kernel from scratch and, and it's not a mild technical glitch here. I'm a very technical user and I've installed Linux uh, dozens and dozens of times and every single time I reinstall Linux I always end up with one thing that I spend seven eight hours searching for some arcane solution for it. I know these are getting less and less common but there always are these roadblocks that you just generally wouldn't run into with an out-of-the-box operating system such as Mac or uh, Windows. It's just the truth of the matter is there's always that one big technical showstopper whereas if you are not really technical competent and sometimes even if you are doing something like getting your driver to not hibernate getting your screen to turn off or on wrong with power management there's just there's always something and it's going to require a higher level of technical capability than most other operating systems do uh, now another one is we're going to revisit one of the strengths i said earlier that unreal engine and unity are both available on linux and that is true but they're also second class citizens and it took forever for there to be a good version of uh, unity on linux and honestly i don't know what the state of it is right now uh, but it has never quite as supported as it is on Windows or Mac platforms. Just the nature of the beast. And ditto in Unreal Engine, you're building it from source, for example. It's not as simple of a process. And that's one of those things you're gonna find with Linux. Linux is just gonna assume that you're happy and capable of building from source. So it's gonna add another step in there. So when you're dealing with Unreal and Unity, it's nice that both are on the platform, but they're also both just a little bit more work and a little bit less supported than they are on the other two platforms. Um, and another one that's kind of, this is a smaller thing, but annoying, is distro fragmentation. Now, one of the strengths of Linux is there's so many different varieties of it out there, but a lot of times what has happened is, especially with commercial software, they'll say, we support Ubuntu. If you don't use that, if you're using Mint or Arch or something else, uh, screw you, you're not supported. And you're going to find these little things that this distro has X, well, this distro doesn't. And you can get around working around that, but there's always these little 
distro headaches that, you know, there's really one version of Windows, one version of Mac OS, 300 versions of Linux. And sometimes that's a pain. And then another weakness of Linux, this was a strength and it's the community. Uh, sometimes looking for help in the Linux community can be uh, kind of like looking for help in the Dark Souls community. Get good, sucker. And and you know what? So I think it's true of any large project. Sometimes the community is as good as it gets. Sometimes the community is a little bit less than welcoming. Um, and then we're moving on to some of the software, the game development software that's available on Linux. Well, as mentioned earlier on, open source software is definitely a strength of an open source operating system. It makes a lot of sense. So you've got um, things like Godot and Blender, Krita, um, Inkscape, GIMP. Those are all probably run the best on the Linux platform and they're kind of the core that Linux is built around. We're sort of revisiting a topic I mentioned earlier. Since you've got great tool chain build tools built directly into the operating system, you also work with frameworks probably easiest on Linux. Getting things like SFML, uh, Raylib and so on to work on Linux is a dream. It's so easy. Generally, it's just a matter of running a single build command and letting it do its thing. Uh, and the package managers and all that kind of stuff just work nice. So frameworks in general just work very nice in a Linux environment. Uh, and then we got things like IDEs and editors. So you got things like the entire JetBrains suite of products, um, CLine, IntelliJ, Rider, and so on. Uh, we got your old school editors such as Vim and Emacs that kind of live in strong in that environment. And then you've got most of your popular editors, Sublime Text, Visual Studio, Studio code are all available uh, there. So if you need a text editor or an IDE for writing your code, you got a pretty good selection of choices in the Linux world. Then we get into the music applications. Now, pro professional music and video editing are two probably weak areas when it comes to software on Linux. Kind of get back to that in just a second, but there are a couple of options. So you've got audio tools such as the DAW Reaper, uh, Z Rhythm that's currently in development, as well as LMMS, all available, but pro tools there, pun not intended, are a little limited. We're going to get back to that when we talk about what's not out there. And then we've got a Pretty good selection of commercial software, uh, such as Maya, Houdini, again, Unreal and Unity are both available. A number of game engines have made their versions available. Construct 3, uh, Game Maker is available in beta. O3D, uh, used to be known as Lumberyard, is being ported to Linux as well. The newer versions of RPG Maker, the default game engine, Substance uh, package and so on are all available on Linux. So you got a decent selection of commercial projects available there. But as we're going to see in this section, the software that is not on Linux, there's also a decent number of things that aren't. And I'm actually going to go really limited on the not on Linux, uh, just because first off, I don't remember them. It's hard to search for things that aren't on something. So uh, we're going to skim over a lot of them. But the one area I mentioned earlier on, commercial audio tools probably the weakest link when it comes to Linux. A lot of the big hitters, um, Logic, FL Studio, and a number of VSTs or virtual instruments just do not work in Linux. So if you're trying to do professional uh, music creation, Linux is probably, this is the weakest area for it. Uh, also for professional video editing tools are somewhat limited there well as well. A lot of the things that are used, especially Adobe Suite, which we'll get back to in a second, a lot of the professional video editing tools are not available. There is one though, obvious that is, is DaVinci Resolve. And that's probably enough for most people. So you're lucky that DaVinci Resolve is there because after that, when it comes to nonlinear editors, you're looking at things like uh, you've got open shot, shot cut, uh, blender, and that's kind of where it falls off. So if you're looking at video editing, it's a little bit better than for commercial audio production, but not a lot. So those two areas are missing some professional tools, audio and video, kind of where Linux probably suffers a little bit. And then the other one, and this is a big deal for some people, especially larger studios, the entire suite of Adobe products other than the... Um, substance line that I mentioned earlier on, not available on Linux. So if you want your Photoshop, you want your Illustrator, you want your After Effects, you want your Premiere, etc. love or hate Adobe, they're an important company and they're not on Linux. And then we got some more in the 3D realm that aren't there. 3D Studios Max, ZBrush, Quixel products. Um, there, there's a decent number of applications out there that just don't have Linux versions or sometimes like you've got things like Cinema 4D where it's only the render side of things. There's an area where uh, Linux is really strong is it's really strongly used in the CG industry at a server side. In terms of 
Client side, again, we've mentioned earlier on Maya, Houdini, and so on are available there, but you've got other tools, again, like ZBrush and Cinema 4D uh, that aren't. And then a lot of smaller tools simply don't make it, as well as a number of game engines, things like, uh, say, CryEngine, Cocos Creator, earlier versions of RPG Maker, etc. There's a lot of um, mid-sized game engines that are Windows only. It's just the nature of the beast. You're going to find just in general, there is there's probably 10 times more software on Windows than there is on Linux. Now, if 99% of it's crap, or if you're willing to uh, pick your tools based on the platform you are on, you can definitely get a full suite of tools in the Linux environment. Just know that there's a lot of stuff out there that just doesn't run on Linux. It's one of the, the main reasons why my channel is predominantly Windows. Not that I necessarily prefer Windows. It's just I'm here to demonstrate tools and applications for you, and the vast majority of tools out there have a Windows. Windows version. It may not be the best version, but they have one. And we're not always the case when you are in the world of Linux. But that is kind of where it boils down to. With Linux, if you don't have something, it's very simple to dual boot into another environment and pick it up. But if you want to go pure Linux for your development environment, just know you're going to have to stay, obviously, in the Linux ecosystem, which is pretty solid. Again, the two big glaring holes is on the um, professional music side of things and video editing. If you're not really kind of getting into those areas and you're willing to uh, let your platform pick your tool. So for example, if you were on a Windows platform, you could choose between Blender, 3D Studios, Max, or Maya. When you're in Linux, your choice is now Maya or Blender. And many of you, that's perfectly fine. Same with game engines. As long as you're willing to go with one of the game engines that's there, well, the good news is the three major engines, uh, or at least the two biggest engines out there have Linux versions available. So it's not really a huge sacrifice to make. Just know uh, in the Linux environment, there is going to be some software you simply do not have access to. So anyways, that is it. My bit of an overview of uh, the game development scene in the world of Linux. It's really quite solid. There's no reason why you could not create uh, any style of game that you wanted, there's a tool in every space. It may not always be the best tool available. Again, going back to the uh, music side of things, although I really do like Reaper. Um, and then uh, on the video side of things, although DaVinci Resolve is a very solid tool, just know you're not going to have access to 100% of everything, but you have a tool to do every job, and you're doing it in an environment that is flexible, free, and open source. So I can see why it appeals to a number of people. So anyways, that is why I didn't cover Linux in that previous video. And today, hopefully, if you're looking at Linux as a platform, I gave you a better insight into what the world of game development is like. If I've got something that I've missed, you would like to add to my list, let me know comments down below and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.